making this video uh, because I am currently trying to make a tutorial on how to make your own sample packs, how to market them, how to mango beats, sound design, uh, a bunch of stuff surrounding that so you can make passive income, share them with other producers, etc, etc. And it seems to be a pretty in-depth topic, so I may have to split it up into a series of videos. So in the meantime, I thought it might be interesting to tell a story of mine uh, that is related to being a musician, self-promotion, being ambitious, thinking outside of the box, um, and there's a lesson in particular. So here goes. By the way, I'm doing this while I'm driving so I can multitask and uh, uh, kill two birds with one stone. So I live in the San Francisco Bay Area and in the early days of the internet before YouTube uh, and before a lot of stuff. Uh, anyway, there was an, a new radio station came to town and these guys were doing it big. They did something I had never seen before. They bought three frequencies on the dial uh, at once. Same radio station. They were called KSJO, and they had they bought three frequencies for broad coverage. One uh, number on the dial was for San Francisco. The other was for San Jose, and then the other was for the East Bay, which is where I live, which is about 40 minutes uh, east of downtown San Francisco. So they had these three frequencies on the dial, same radio station, FM, and. They also were syndicated, I believe, in Dallas, uh, I believe in Las Vegas, and somewhere in Florida, maybe Miami, and then someplace uh, back east, like New Jersey or something like that. I'm not absolutely sure on that, but uh, they had a new DJ uh, who was who lived in the Bay Area. He moved to the Bay Area for this as soon as they you know, started this radio station, and his name was Mikey. That was all he went by, in the last name, not, nothing in it. He was a shock jock. He was trying to be the West Coast version of Howard Stern, but his own way. He was original. He didn't copy Howard or anything. But he did have some pranks that got him in hot water now and then. But he was a real cool dude. I got to meet him, but that's part of the story. So he had a show on during the afternoon drive. And... Uh, would often mention that he thought Van Halen was the greatest rock band in history. And he was a big Van Halen fan. And at the time, I happened to be working for somebody who sold bootleg recordings. That was one of his businesses and all types of recordings that hardly anyone had and nobody was supposed to have. And I would do what I call turd polishing. I would take a crappy recording and I would try to make it sound less crappy. I didn't have a lot to work with, but I would lower noise and increase uh, the, the output and maybe re EQ it, whatever I could do to improve the quality. And it just so happened that I had the first three Van Halen albums in demo format. Uh, so these are, were re recorded for the actual albums. So the versions on these songs were versions that most people had never heard before. The quality wasn't as good, but for anybody who was a big fan and nostalgic, uh, they were a coveted item, and not a lot of people even knew that they existed. So I was in the habit at the time, I was in my early 30s, of I would wake up every day and think to myself, what can I do to promote my career? Because I didn't have a manager, I didn't have money for a manager, I didn't trust people to be my manager, and whenever I did that, it seemed to go wrong. And so I was in the habit of thinking, How, what can I do myself? Who can I email? Because email was a new thing, and that kind of, in many ways, put people at, in my reach that otherwise wouldn't be. So I went on the KSTR website, 
and I got Mikey's email address and I wrote him an email and I said, hey, I hear, I love your show, love the station, great job. And uh, it just so happens that I have the first three Van Halen albums in demo format and I hear all the time uh, how much you like them, would you like to have a copy? And by the way, I'm a Bay Area guitarist who's unsigned and uh, can I include my music as well if I send you this. And so he wrote back uh, within 24 hours and said, hells yeah, please forward me these demos you spoke of. So I made them CD copies and also included my music and sent it to him in the mail. And a day later, I was driving around town and had KSJO on and it was Mikey's show and I hear my music being played in the background of the show and I couldn't believe it. I'd never been on the radio before and I was floored. So I pulled over and I couldn't believe it. I called all my friends. So I wrote a reply back to Mikey. I wrote an email and I said, oh my God, thank you so much, you are the man. And he said, no, you're the man, thank you. I can't believe it, I love this. You know, he loved the Van Halen recordings. And he said, uh, you have an open invitation to come on my Friday show called Free Beer Fridays anytime you want uh, as a guest. So Free Beer Fridays was a show where he invited local microbreweries, local to Northern California to come in and what they would do is it'd be a mini party whoever they invited uh, for that Friday show the microbrewery would supply the beer and then in exchange Mikey would advertise the product for them so uh, I said awesome and I uh, asked him when I could come in and uh, he said how about this Friday so I said sure so all my friends told me to take my guitar and amp just in case. And I was like, why? I mean, he's not gonna, he doesn't even hardly know me. He's not gonna let me play. And they said, just take it anyway. I uh, heeded their advice. And I put my amp in the, and guitar in the back of my car and uh, headed to San Jose. And uh, when I got there, one of my childhood heroes a guitar player named Dave Manichetti from a group called Y&T. Uh, I think their big hit was Black Tiger. Anyway, um, he was there and they were setting up this little amp called a Pig Nose. That big and a very small speaker. And it sounded like crap. And they were trying to mic this thing. And Dave Manichetti was going to play over the air. And he didn't seem to look very happy. First of all, I was blown away that one of my heroes was happy to be in such a show that I want to see. And so I said, hey, guys, um, I got an amp in my car. It's much better than this. I can grab it and mic it up. So he said, sure. So I went to my car, and the amp that I had was, it was a Line 6 Flex Tone. It was a combo. It was one of the first modeling amps out there. And uh, it's, he sounded great on it. Uh, they mic'd up my Line 6 Flexstone and Dave Minichetti played. I think there must have been about 15 people in the room. And uh, he, he played over the air during drive time traffic and I think there were million or two million people driving around the Bay Area that heard him at the time and sounded great. I was in awe and while he was there before he left I had I went and grabbed my guitar which was at the time an Ibanez and it had looked like a custom paint job. It wasn't well the artist had made it probably around 50 to 80 of them so it wasn't like a one of a kind, but the way it looked was, you know, there definitely weren't very many of them. It was like a screaming face with electricity coming out of it. And it was like a blue and black sunburst 
So I went and showed him my guitar and he, he dug it. And so then I basically set the stage. I have my guitar and my amp in the room. And then Dave Manikini had to leave. And everybody said, oh, where are you going? He's all, man, I, I'm going to the guitar center. I got to give me one of these, these Line 6 amps. He liked it that much. So I was pretty stoked to have influenced one of my childhood mentors to purchase an amp like mine. So, um, uh, so I was stoked about that. So he left. And the rest of us were still there. And I don't know what got into me. But I said to Mikey, I said, uh, by the way, you know, I could I could play on the air for you too if you want. And Mikey looks in the space for like two seconds and looks back at me and says, okay. And I was blown away. I couldn't believe it. So I had nothing prepared. Luckily, I'm a decent improviser and I'm not scared to improvise. In fact, oddly enough, I'm more comfortable improvising in front of strangers than I am playing stuff I know and less likely to mess it up. So, I, the mic, the amp was already mic'd, I plugged in, I played for, I don't know, 30 seconds to a minute, something like that, and I got a standing ovation in the room. Everybody in the room clapped and stood up and they were blown away. And all my friends around the Bay Area that were also listening to the station heard it. And I, I started getting texts on my cell phone. And... I thought I was done, and Mikey said, oh my God, that was great, why don't you play some more? So I did a second improv solo, and again, everybody was blown away, and then they talked about me for a little bit and told where you could find me on the, on the web. And after that, for I went on to appear on the Mikey Show for another six times. So seven times all together. Um, I'm trying to dig up one of the last ones and put it at the end of this. I know I have it. I've recently found it and dug it up uh, so that you guys can see. At the beginning, when I first went in there, everything was kind of like a red oak and looked very rock and roll. And there was a big table and uh, some off the wall stuff happened there. Like one time I went in and they had a guest was a dominatrix and she had her slave there and uh, she got on the table and while they were on the radio he performed oral favors on her while the rest of us looked on in awe and thought to ourselves wow this when shock jocks do this kind of stuff on the radio it's really happening by the time I went to the last show he had gotten in trouble for such antics and the place looked more like a, a professional radio studio that was more stuffy and a lot less rock and roll and uh and that's a video that i have so it didn't look as glamorous uh but very much like what you would expect almost like a computer lab um and the, that last one that i went there i performed the bumpers live bumpers are pieces of music played in between segments and uh so i would just improvise some stuff in between and uh so anyway uh one of the he would not only did i get to play s seven times or i mean get to be on the show seven times um i performed on the show with my guitar probably three times all together and then mikey used my music in the background on the show pretty much every day for like three years uh, he was super kind that way, and so the moral of the story was. The moral of the story was, don't be afraid to ask for something you want. The worst that can happen is they say no. Thank you. And the other moral of the story was. The egg roast when it's ours, okay? Yep. Try to think out of the box in ways that you can promote yourself and get ahead um, in any way that you possibly can is a good payoff big. One of the greatest things that happened was uh, once Mikey was interviewing Richard Lewis, the comedian, and Richard Lewis heard the music playing in the background, which was me, and stopped the interview 
stop the interview to ask Mikey who the music was in the background. And Mikey said, oh yeah, that's a local Bay Area guitarist. He's great. Um, I play him on my show all the time. So I couldn't believe it, Richard Lewis. You may not have heard of him, or you can Google him. He stopped his interview to ask who I was. So I didn't become famous or get a record contract from that, but I did get a lot of exposure. And I, to this day, I can put that on my resume uh, as having performed live on the radio and had my music played a lot. And uh, it was definitely worth the email that I sent. I guess the other moral of the story is um, be prepared. If I hadn't listened to my friends, taking my guitar and my amp, none of that would have happened. So you have to think ahead as well. Even if it seems impossible, that's something to happen. And I have to wonder how much of it may have come to pass because I simply wanted it bad enough if I in some way manifested my reality by focusing on it. But I definitely wanted to play on the radio. My friends knew it before I did. So I hope you enjoyed that story. And uh, I have more stories like that. There was a time where, like I said, I woke up every single day thinking, who can I email today to further my career? And that was a habit that I was in. And I'm uh, basically trying to get in the habit of that again now to do the same thing. Life's not over yet. I'm even better guitar player now. Um, if you like the story in this video or any of the other videos on my channel, um, it would be great if you aren't already subscribed. If you subscribe or you smash the like button, that would help me. I'm a little new to this YouTube thing, so I'm, I haven't done a lot of content where I speak you and tell you about my experiences, but I plan on doing more of it. I'm kind of growing as the channel grows, and uh, hopefully I will get better at it, do a lot less umming, um, uh, uh, you know, and yeah, that's it. Over and out, Benhead producer, Mark Madison, and oh yeah, you can also find my music on Spotify, Apple Music. Google Music, YouTube, M-A-R-C, P as in Paul, A-T-T-I-S-O-N. Uh, if you like stuff like Joe Cetriani and, and Graham Elmstein, Dream Theater, I guess, I don't know how much I actually sound like any of those, but I fit in it somewhere where you can open up for any of those people live. And, uh... Yeah, go check out my music. I also do electronic music and do some singing. I'm not just into guitar-related stuff. You can find that on SoundCloud as well. That's all my newer, unpublished stuff. Okay, over now. I'll catch you next time. And now, back to the Mikey Show with Mikey. I like it when I go, okay, dude, go ahead. And he goes, oh, not much. Um, anyway. <laughs> Eddie. I don't understand this. Just throw some vital and chocolate at him. Yeah. They'll be fine. No. Oh, sky. You guys are being such jerks. Boy blunder. I don't get it. I don't. I don't understand. Like, where are you getting that? I'm trying to screw with you. And Sean. No, I, I'm not afraid of him. I just hate him. It's the Mikey Show on 92, 92 KSJO. <laughs> That is Mark Patterson. He's a local guy. It's great. It's awesome because I feel like I'm part of the band, even though he's the only guy who can play it.
Yeah. We're, we're roadies. Yeah. That's right. I'm a groupie. Uh, yeah. Jake Johansson is in the studio. <laughs> Mark, give me some guitar, dude. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. I'm starting to feel it. Yeah, sounds good. Mark Patterson, dude. Yeah. Uh, he, uh, he is a local guitar virtuoso. Don't you have yeah. a website or something, Mark? Because I know people have uh, called before and asked me. It's markpatterson.com. M A R C. P-A-T-T-I-S-O-N.com. Yeah, you spell it all weird. I told someone, go to markpatterson.com, and they're like, that, no. Oh, yeah. Mark, it's Mark with a C. Ass, dude. You yeah, sound totally. so great. I like it. Sounds awesome. Let me get you over the microphone over here. So, uh, what are you doing now? I mean, do you have a band, or what's going on? Um, we're about to work with a new bass player who's really great, and, uh, you know, bring guitar back to... You know, an audience that has been missing it for a long time. That's killer, dude. You sound so good. Oh, well, thank you very much. The guy's just one of the best guitar players I know of. Oh, you're making me blush. Let me know if you need, like, keyboardist or... Eddie, you don't play, dude. I mean, I don't mind. Do you know any keyboardists? You need uh, break dancers. Yeah, dude. Uh, People in robot costumes. I do some mean vocals. No, you don't. We've heard you sing. Uh, We need a lead kazoo. (laughs) Oh, I'm in. This guy's a mean triangle. So, uh, anyway. You should take the booty while she's doing it. Uh, Mark, you want to give me a little something to take us out? Guitar virtuoso. Yeah. His name is Mark Pattison. You can go to his website. It's M-A-R-C-P-A-T-T-I-S-O-N dot com. Uh-huh. Thank Come you, Mark. Down. You did a great job, man. Feel real good. Awesome.